Kid and Shook get a hit here in the early part of the band phase. One more coming out for Cloud9 as we start off our first best of three in the day. Nobody wants to deal with the Gnar in the top lane. Just too gnarly. Now to see what Wicked yeah. will decide for the team. And whether or not Alliance is going to play the Warwick game. Right, that is left open. Yeah, uh, you could like see Cloud9, reaction from Cloud9 really wanted to play against it yesterday because it offers such a small amount of early game presence and Cloud9 is just really trying to win the game before Warwick can become effective. And uh, it doesn't seem like Cloud9 wants to play that game because they want their jungler to be able to help their lanes early. Right. Same thing with this match. And the first pick Corky here, now we have seen many first pick Corkies, but this does limit the options that Cloud9 has because they really, yeah. if they want to run the yeah. double AD, they need the Corky to do the mixed AD and magic damage. That's the way that that comp works out best so that you can't itemize against it effectively. So I think that's a particularly savvy pick for Alliance first here to make Cloud9 show something new. Well, when I was speaking to C9 yesterday, they actually said that they didn't really, as we said, they didn't plan on that. They didn't plan to do a double AD comp. Yeah, so yeah. they actually practiced not for that. Um, so Alliance taking that away is not necessarily going to limit C9 in the way that we normally would. True, doesn't really hurt it. It's something they were able to adapt to on the spot. So it looks like they're actually able to get a little leg up with that pick going over to Corky. I wouldn't say it's a leg up. Corky's still pretty tough to fight against, but we're waiting to see what Alliance still pans out the rest of the team with. Seeing a bit of a little pick composition coming out now or a lockdown if anybody gets caught out in ward control if Cloud9 can put it down with that Lissandra and Thresh so far locked in. I wonder see if we'll... a bit of Sorak coming out yesterday as well. I wonder if we'll see Aurelia coming out of Wicked against Lissandra. It should have a relatively okay laning phase. Uh, Rally is actually banned, Snippy. Well, that's the yeah. <laughs> Well, see, the uh, Cloud9 the was... The answer to that is the, no. No, that's we'll not serious. Yeah. The, the, team, the team that learned from oh, Worlds. Oh, at least, at least he's going to do oh, it. Oh, no, don't do it. No. He, I so hear he's your, been practicing what, it a lot. What are your reservations with Elise? I mean, I feel like she takes more effort to use than she did before the patch, and she was barely worth the effort back on the pre on the world's patch, basically. Right. I don't think she has the type of late game scaling she needs or, or necessarily early game presence to make up for those things. And we talk about the level six a little bit with the stats and the health going down. She yeah. doesn't have an explosive six. She just gets six. As, as yeah. team fights are a lot more centric now, oh yeah, at least it doesn't have that presence yeah. in team fights that other junglers necessarily provide. But cocoons are still insanely strong. And Shook is a player that's known to land those cocoons, so it can create a great impact in this poke game if you just land one cocoon. Follow that, but follow yeah. that up with some damage. You'll, you'll take down towers, you'll take down objectives. I'm so worried about their composition shaping up so far because it is relatively low damage in the late game right yeah, now. So right. they're going to have to have a very impactful uh, top and mid laner to make this work. Also, balls on the Lissandra again. Great, again, great in lane yesterday. Very lackluster in terms of his positioning and yeah. uh, ultimate choices. And that actually delayed Cloud9's victory pretty significantly against Pain. There isn't going to be a Warwick in this game, though. He was caught out a lot by Warwick ultimates yesterday. Yeah. It's true. Sneaky getting Lucian, that's going to be very good for them. They're putting together somewhat of a composition that we saw from them yesterday, so they're going back to comfort for what they feel now. We know Sneaky can wreck some house on that Lucian, but we're looking for the damage coming in from Alliance, and that, that's not really going to bring all the damage that they need, but quickly locked in for Reckless. What rounds out this team now for the mid lane? What can control it? I mean, LeBlanc is still there, but you could get locked up by the Lissandra if you try to go in hard on a fight. This is going to be a tough pickup for these guys. They, I mean, they can still use the Corky, right? Yeah. yeah. So traditionally, Maokai is actually pretty good against the double AP setup. If C9 does go down the double mm -hmm. AP route, it's not guaranteed that they will right now. But when we looked at OGN, Lissandra had a really solid laning phase against Maokai um, in the top lane. It's really yeah. important to note that this is one of the first games, if not the first game, that Jace has been available. And, and Jace, pick, that's and a Jace good point. would be an excellent pickup for Cloud9 um, if High is able to play in the mid lane. I feel like it would have been an excellent pickup for Alliance as well. Yeah. Like they would have the Corky plus the Jace poke. Uh, mixed damage basically coming in as well as uh, Tank and Maokai, but none of that stuff was happening. Okay. Fizz for some wow. Yeah. The in, the in team. <laughs> that, that pressure in the mid lane, though, from Jarvan and Fizz against the Zerath. I wonder if we're going to see a level two gank coming out of Meteos again. He did it in the previous game, and I think that could happen again in this game. All right, well, the teams are locked in. We see both sides. We will be into game shortly, but we're going to take a quick break before we're back with Alliance versus Cloud9 from the Intel Extreme Masters San Jose League of Legends.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Intel Extreme Masters here in San Jose. I am joined in the Castadents by the very special, <laughs> very, very special the very CLG old base squad. <laughs> Starting the out, the squad. WCG world champion. <laughs> Back in 2010, I should have my gold medal. Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler, and the man that replaced him at CLG <laughs> just before the season one World Finals, same vicious. We're the original smite missers. You got Kobe 24 <laughs> yes. and then Saint 24 over here. So <laughs> we, got, we got it unlocked. Now they have it. these newfangled smites. They're all color coded. They tell you how much damage they do without massing over them. <laughs> yeah, right. So many new options. I'm glad I got the two junglers here with me. <laughs> Wouldn't want it any other way. It is a big game. It is the semifinals here in San Jose, of course, Alliance facing off against Cloud9. And let's go through those pick and bans since they just came through. Uh, as soon as it finished off, we said Cloud9. Like Cloud9 have a really good team, very mobile. They can get in, get out. Yeah, the, one of the things I like is a bunch of gap closers versus Zareth versus a team that has the opportunity to poke so much. And then, as Saint was talking about, Fizz is just a good last pick just because he has that healing debuff. And there's a lot of healing on this team as well. So if they build that uh, magic resist aura pretty early on, I think they have a good chance. It's also really hard for uh, the Elise to put pressure on Fizz. I mean, hitting a, co a cocoon when you have a, <laughs> like you can make yourself pretty much untargetable. Uh, it's gonna be pretty hard to gank that. But I think if Alliance could actually get ahead and get like a poke situation down and start like whittling them down, they can be really well. And it's gonna force Cloud9 into a position where their only option is, is we have to engage on them. And if they mess up that engage, they can go really bad for them. Yeah. And of course, we should talk about that man that was just on the screen there. It is his debut, Reckless. His very first game. I, I actually had the chance to talk to him yesterday, and he was like, it, it's very different being here right, with Alliance because his family, the only thing he's known in League of Legends so far has been the two years he spent with Fnatic because he was there for a full year before he was able to play in the LCS. So it's, it's a big change for him. And of course, this is his first match on the international stage before he starts off the LCS. We heard Monte Cristo talking about AD change is not that big of a deal in terms of team comp, but uh, it's still a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Yeah, and he's going to be going up against Sneaky. Like, Sneaky is the most solid AD carry for North America. He's just, he comes and performs very well every single time, so uh, well, it'll be a very good test for Reckless. Yeah, I think Sneaky's a really consistent player, and uh, I think just the duo together, him and Lemonation, are going to be able to definitely, this is going to be the test, if anything, for Reckless. Well, let's see if there's any level one plays. Cloud9 were the one that made it yesterday. They went very aggressive on pain gaming, and it looks like they're going to be trying to do the same thing here. And obviously, we've been talking very heavily about jungle because the 420 patch, there was a lot of changes to it. But again, they get in that vision in and around the blue buff. I really, oh, I really like what Cloud9 is doing compared to some of the other teams we saw yesterday. A lot of the teams are really passive in their level ones, and they pretty much like let the other jungler do whatever they want to do, and the team do whatever they want to do. And Cloud9 is like, no, like we're going to go in your jungle, we're going to find out what you're doing, and we're going to do what we want to do. Right, and it's something that they have always been known to do, right? Getting the early vision down so Meteos can establish uh, you know, control of both jungles. Jungles. In, in this new patch, getting control of just one of the sides of the jungles to get information on where your opponent is starting can be really, really huge. We'll, we'll see if it works out. That ward, of course, being placed very deep, giving them knowledge of whether they're having a 2v1 situation in the top. It looks like it's Cloud9 that want the 2v1. You can see the Sneaky Elimination are heading to the top lane. We also have Balls, of course, doing the buddy system, which we saw him doing yesterday against Pain Gaming. So he's following once again with Medios. Yeah, and you can see that Alliance actually expects a 2v1 like outright, because his Corky's not even trying to do the Grom, or I mean the doubles, and he's just sitting there waiting to freeze the lane. So Alliance knows this is going to happen. It's not a surprise to them at all. Yeah, trying to get away from that Soraka lane. They just have Corky there. He groups up the minions gets them all to attack the first one, so it should start pushing against him, and then he can freeze the lane. So we, we've got a difference yesterday. Of course, we saw Pain Game, and he was sitting in the lane early on. We can see on, on the minimap, Wicked actually went and did the Wraiths, a solo as well. So soloed the Wraiths. He's now coming back down. I think he was potentially starting the Wolves there, and then obviously got told, get the hell out of my jungle by Shook. <laughs> yeah, doing that race start actually helps you out tremendously. Not only does it instantly put you at level two, but it also gives you a bunch of potions and a ward if you decide to go back uh, right after that. Well, they're going for a blue invade here. Yeah, it's going to be a counter, you can see. It is Cloud9 starting out the blue frog and dodging out of that death sensor from Lemonation. Again, like we saw yesterday, a lot of roaming from Lemonation, and it is going to be a counter blue from Wicked and Nif, and here comes Shook to finish the deal and close that one out. But Lemonation's nearby. I wonder if he's going to get caught up in a in a roam as he goes past. No, he's not going to choose that route going wisely. And 
Balls of Medios, they're taking the Gromp as well, so that may well be more than Shook takes. No, he is going to take the Gromp as well, so completely countering each other right now. So Cloud9 has the strong side of the map. You can see they're all staying on the side where their AD carry and support are, and I don't think they're going to venture into the bottom. Um, I think it'd be really smart for Alliance to take Dragon here because they know that. It's really dangerous to go face checking straight into where you have no vision and you probably, there's four, three to four people that are just grouped up down there waiting for you. Um, I'm surprised they aren't going for the dragon though. Like Elise is still pretty, even though the dragon can AoE your little minions, Elise is still very good at doing dragon. And especially with Soraka, I'm just surprised they didn't go for that. Yeah, and dragon, you can literally take no damage from it right now. It's pretty easy to juggle that aggro if you have a support that knows what they're doing and just uh, walks in to get it to change targets at the right time. They did have some fairly deep wards in the jungle to see anyone going for it, but they make the rotation up top uh, to try and clean up this experience that's up at the turret. Ooh. Shook might want to make a move here. Maokai does have his twisted But look, they got the deep wards. They saw, they know that Shook was there and immediately sneaking in lamination back well away from that one. The Tribush ward giving them the coverage as well. So all of the knowledge required for Cloud9. So good research on Alliance, it seems there. Going back to the jungle, um, this is the first time we're seeing an Elise, and you guys, obviously, you knew this was kind of coming. We've heard a lot of it, that Shook's been playing <laughs> yeah. a lot of Elise. He just won't drop it, man. He just won't drop it. I don't know why. Like, I think Elise in solo queue, somebody had it on Reddit, it was 32% win rate in solo queue. Um, I just don't really think it's a champion that fits in the new jungle. Yeah, you can, like, you have sustain, you can clear out the jungle pretty well, but I feel like she's a champion that just gets kind of, like, outscaled almost. I don't, I don't know if it's outscaled, but she just doesn't fit into the team fights people have right now. Uh, people are really AP heavy with their team comps. Uh, if you look at like uh, Alliance's team comp, they have uh, Malakai, they have Zarif, yeah. uh, Corky does a lot of magic damage, and I think it's a lot better to have these physical damage junglers right now. I mean, they, they have pretty much a full uh, AP team right now. I mean, Corky even does a, about 50% of it, so it's a, it is a full, very much heavy AP comp, and that actually may prove a problem for them late game, because Cloud9 could certainly stack up some of that magic resist, though. At the moment, we are seeing Meteos taking a peek towards this mid lane. Zerath, some a champion we've seen a fair amount yesterday. One of the more popular champions, it seems, in 420 so far. Yeah, uh, Poke is really big right now, and as you can see, he gets a pretty good chunk there onto high. But because Cloud9 have been spending uh, a lot more time mid with their jungle roaming around, high has actually accrued uh, fairly good CS here against Zareth. You know, the range disadvantage not hurting him at all. Yeah, it's actually a really good it matchup for Fizz if you can make it out of the laning phase and pretty much get to level six because you have so much kill pressure with Jarvan. Like, all you have to do is hit the fish, and then it, you're just done. Like, you ha don't have any escapes. That barrier is not going to save you. Yeah. Yeah, really, it's it's up to Zara to try and take advantage of those early stages where he can uh, try and keep Fizz from CSing. But because of the lane swap there, he got a lot of support. So and he's got a good start. I, I was watching three pick and bands and I like I mentioned, it's like why did we not see a LeBlanc instead of a Fizz? Um, I think he was scared to blind pick uh, the LeBlanc because uh, no, it was the, it was the, the final pick. pick. It was the final pick. Oh, you're talking about it for, uh, for Cloud9, nine. yeah, for high. Oh. Is it just not a champion he plays? Niff actually caught in. We could go very deep on that one to defend him. That was not a death sentence they wanted to take, and they didn't come out too well in that exchange. Oh, well, to touch back on that note, uh, I think they just really wanted the healing debuff uh, from Fizz, and then also, it, high, uh, high is a really good Fizz player, and it just gives you a little bit more engage. I think I like Fizz's engage better than LeBlanc when it comes to the mid and late game. Yeah, specifically High, he's just put so much more time in on Fizz than he has on LeBlanc. Always nice to be a bit more comfortable. We'll see how he can roam around, too. They've got decent ward coverage around that mid lane right now, already putting down the pink wards. A lot of pressure on his top tower as well. That's been taken low. Lemonation getting focused on. They're getting see Shook come in there. Could they get first? But they're going to leap up towards him. It's a good play from Lemonation. And he gets away safe. Another nice escape for Cloud9. It's just really hard to get any like gang follow up from a Soraka. All she can really do is she can drop a silence or she can hit maybe slow you if she nails you with the Q. But it, it is so hard to hit that. So yeah. I, I think is that any other support that, that gank would have worked. Yeah, especially with Maokai. I mean, he's got the CC, but they're lacking some damage up there. Yeah. Meanwhile, Meteos comes down to try and defend this pink ward. Maybe a little bit of a bait here for a Frog. And they're invading on the red side jungle, trying to establish some vision, you know, just in case the early dragon fight does come about. Yeah, I really think this 2v1 favors Cloud9. Um, there's not really much pressure coming out of the Soraka lane, Ooh. so they can pretty much do anything they want. And on top of that, Thresh is just a, a much deadlier roaming presence. This is a bit of an invade from our oh, Cloud9. They're stood on a ward. They're both actually Lemon spotted each other with a ward. Now they know there's three members there. Are they going to collapse on towards it? Rectus is coming back. He's just gone back to buy a fade, so he's going to come back with the item. There's the ward coverage cleared. Wicked is out 
of mana right now, so even though he has teleport, if he joined the fight, he would not have a big presence. So sneaky not being there is not too scary for them. They give it. They're able to get it anyway. Yeah, they give it up. They're not even gonna try and fight for it. So red buff stolen away by Minios, not even contested by Alliance. This is actually really big that they're taking their jungle because they're cutting off a source of income uh, from Alliance. Now all Elise can really do is she has to go the long way around and she can clear two camps there and hand off the blue buff. So she's going to fall really far behind it and as far in farm for this. Yeah, and I love that the way that they did it, they full clear the red, not only to take all the experience and gold that's uh, in the small minions, but also to get the timer on it for the next one. Plus, they clear everything except one small camp, or one small baby from those raptors. Those things are on a 100 second respawn timer once that's finally cleared. So that's gonna be gone for a really long time, which means no Oracle's smite uh, reward for their team for a long time. It's gonna hurt their vision coverage. Yeah, that's actually really big. If you have a little bit of attack speed, you can clear multiple wards. It's not just one ward yes. you can clear with that. You can actually clear like two to three wards if you have backup. Well, we saw the Phage proc damage there. Phosphorus Bomb coming out of Reckless alongside his new support, Nif. It's a Interesting combo, we've got to keep our eye on. Of course, Niff's come across a number of teams, formed a pretty decent partnership with Tabs, in all honesty. It was a somewhat surprising change, even to Tabs himself, honestly, because he's been very vocal about this change. But of course, a lot of people caught off guard by the changes that Fnatic have made and been forced to make throughout the season. Be good to see how they handle coming into the odds of the EU LCS. But Alliance, they are looking currently to be. I would say the number one European team, but Unicorns are for an impressive performance yesterday. Yeah, Maokai's gonna have to back off that tower. They, they know it's coming, it's the four-man dive. Uh, he's just gonna play it safe. Yeah, and Wicked is also sort of building for a team fight here, getting early armor uh, rather than getting some magic resistance. Versus a double AP comp, uh, guess he's just trying to survive more against that Lucian. He that's, was getting kind of beat up in the top lane. That's a really unusual, like that's gonna, his, his is gonna first, come out yeah. so, yeah, it's gonna come out so late. So I think Maokai's power spike, I don't, I'm not even sure when it's gonna come. He's just not gonna have it, because Maokai really benefits from having a lot of health with his passive. And that's why Roa is also a really good item. You need health, you need mana, you need a little bit of AP to make yourself a threat. Um, Roa is just like the perfect item and uh, I, don't, I don't think he's going to be able to fit that into his build. Yeah, it's a little strange that he hasn't gotten that for that first item. Teleport to the mid lane. Looks like they want to try and create a player. A little unusual whether they're expecting Cloud9 to go full force. They have fully stacked down the bottom half of this map, so they could well be trying to force a Dragon out, but I think it's a little early. I think it's more Cloud9 actually trying to create a player. I think that's a mistake for him to TP in there, because now all they have to do is rotate the Lissandra to top and just have her start pressuring in with a little bit of wards. And Maokai is forced to go top, and they can just get an easy dragon off that. Yeah, you can see they're already doing it here, having balls recall. They're going to try and take advantage of this. The only thing is that the vision coverage currently for Alliance here, so they're going to have to throw something down for balls to actually teleport on if they want him in a good position. Oh, Frogger not landing a single skill shot there. That tower, though, has gone down. And that equals things up one apiece. Slow start, 11 minutes into this game. No first blood just yet, and very much equal on gold. These two teams, we expected this. They're very much going to be a tense affair between them. Cloud9, of course, on home turf, effectively, were based in San Jose throughout last year. Did recently move to Santa Monica. Meanwhile, of course, Alliance coming in as the what were the European hopefuls, but that's all been blown apart, of course, by Unicorns of Love. Fantastic performance yesterday. They are waiting in the finals. It is down to one of these teams to join them. And right now, Balls on the Sandra, just like yesterday, he's doing a fantastic job. He's rushing the Morels again, too. And same thing with Zara, if he's rushing the Morels to try to, well, yeah, it's just like such a cheap form of a CDR. It's like a good item, really good AP. I think it's just like the new item on the new patch. It's everybody's favorite new item. <laughs> well, I mean, even Jat approved yesterday. After <laughs> after some some confusion, uh, the yeah. double Morel and Amakons, he finally realized, and then he even brought a bad pun out of Yuko. Hey, that's cheap, man. 40% CDR, a bunch of AP, it's all good. Yeah, and I think that Balls is also going to have a lot easier time performing once we do get to the team fight stage in this game. The only thing that can really lock him down is the silence, Ooh. and here they go mid. Here we go. Froggen going to be focused. Nif straight away there. Throwing down that silence, keeping Medios away. Balls taking a bit of poke as well. So again, Cloud9 tried to group. Well, Wicked has to roam his way down. Dragon is... Almost certainly a possibility now. We're closing in on 13 minutes. All right, so as we watch this Ooh, dragon fight lane. develop here, uh, Alliance are going to try and lay down poke, whereas Cloud9 going to look for the quick engage.
trying to get pressure here on the mid turret while Cloud9 are stuck in the river. This is where Alliance's team combat is at its strongest, because now they're going to group up mid and just try to poke them off the turret. And then Cloud9's only option in this is they have to hard engage, and if they mess up that hard engage, they basically lose the game right there. Well, they forced them away. Reckless has joined the team, and that is now a five-man alliance squad. They have the river control. They have the ward control. It is leaving Sneaky all alone on this bottom tower, and this could be the second turret of the game. It looks like Wicked has to deal with this, and again, nobody going to start off that dragon. It's a little scary when there's no picks. Yeah, Cloud9. Whoa! Fish oh. just to try and clear minions there and help, but uh, some good jukes from high. He had to use Flash. Flash as well, yeah. Wicked now it also having to pop his ultimate down the bottom there and try and get out of it. Flash also burned by the top laner. While this is all happening, Balls is free farming on that top lane, and he's going to continue going, but it does mean Alliance, they're going to try and create I... something. The Flash is down, the ulti is down for high. This is the time to go. They may well be able to get this Dragon. Yeah, yeah plus he's back in up. base. That's it. That's theirs, definitely. Well, this is not too bad, because Asandra's just free farming. You can see she's getting ahead in CS to the Maokai. So as long as they just make sure they get that next Dragon and they're ready for it, uh, so they can you know, get the 8% AD and EP, uh, I think this is this is okay by Cloud9. And that's also the first time I've ever seen a Fizz wave clear with his ultimate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can shortcast it if you want and just drop it on the floor like that. Currently, Alliance have grouped, and look at this. Balls and Medios waiting to lock them up, and they are very much tightly stacked. That could be a horrendous ultimate if Balls catches them in the right spot. They do gently back away. Sneaky takes down that bottom turret. That's the second turret for Cloud9. And, of course, with the global gold changes Ooh. to the Dragon, it does put them in the lead. One more Reckless shot. continuing to take down the second turret for them. And that is Alliance now with their second turret as Cloud9 back away. But that mid turret, it's a big one to take down, and Cloud9 had to give that up fairly easily. Well, this is really dangerous for Alliance because now uh, the majority of the outer turrets are down. So the only thing they can group up on is that top turret, and they have to go pretty deep into the enemy territory to do that. And when you have like this poke comp um, versus a hard engage comp, that's when you're going to be your most vulnerable. Plus, they'd have to move a lot of their vision up there. Right now, they, they've spent pretty much every single word that they have down around that dragon pit, too to get that first dragon. I like the little line of wards uh, <laughs> from the blue side. You can see <laughs> they have the little two pink wards down. They have like perfect symmetrical little ward placements. Oh, Cloud9 continue to play this one slow. It's kind of what we expected. Or well, Cyanide getting involved in this one. Ex fanatic player alongside his ex teammate. And he, like he said, kind of surprised to see Elise just like you were, just like everybody was here. We kind of knew it was coming as well. We're like, is he going to go for it? Warwick and Pantheon were both available, as was Jarvan, but at least one of the first, I think it was like the second lane of picks they went for, so very early pick as well. So Shook very much still relying on that old champion. And this is something that honestly will be leveled at Alliance throughout the 2015 season is, can they adopt to the new metas? Wicked's always been a struggle to change champion pools. Is Shook also stuck in his ways? Well, I think one of the reasons why they went with the Leafs in this team comp is they know the only way they can lose in the early mid game is if they get hard engaged on from the, you know, a flank. And he saw he went sidestone before he even finished his full jungle item. So he just wants to ward up everywhere on the sides, make sure they can't get flanked, and make sure the Zeref's going to be safe. Well, one thing that Froggen always talks about is the vision game. They're very much picking that up. That's something they have adopted heavily from the Korean meta. Oh, we're just about to see whether... No, nope, they're not going to go for a gank here. Balls is actually waiting, just hidden off the side. Now he's going to go back to the tower, so he's not going to try anything. And the other thing, though, there's two parts of that vision game, right? You have to really keep control of Cloud9's wards because Balls can flank from pretty much anywhere. If he gets a teleport in on anywhere behind your team, then uh, Lissandra's amazing at uh, coming up with that flank. It, it was the biggest thing we noticed at Worlds. Obviously, while it's one thing to put your vision down, Koreans would defend. The, not, you're not only going to put the ping wards down, you will defend and fight for those ping wards. Middle tower not being defended, and this is a clean push from Cloud9. They may be able to get on towards the second one. You can see Alliance, they're trying to flank around, but they're a long way out right now, and that's a lot of damage going down. Yeah, so Cloud9 not wanting to fight that poke right now, so they just trade the top turret for the mid turret, and they're going to try and get out of here, but uh, Alliance... Hot on their heels. Yeah, I really like that Cloud9 did that. They know that uh, it's really hard to defend against all that poke and sustain. So instead they just yeah. trade it. It's a safer play. And I think Cloud9 is a team that's always down to trade objectives like that. And that's one of the reasons why they're such a strong team. 
No, Wicked wasn't the one they wanted, hooked on him. Looks like he is going to go for that Rod of Ages now, so it's going to be a delayed Rod of Ages, and that's going to be a very slow one as well. We're nearly at the 20-minute mark, and he hasn't yet to complete it, so that is going to take a while to get stacked out. Lichbane, first item as well, coming out of high, rather than going towards anything else. We'll see if that works out for him. Morello Nomicon, of course, was picked up by Frog and early. Looks like it's going to be a Void Staff to follow, or whether he'll switch off to something else, of course, Frog and... He builds anything he wants on some champion, especially in Ivia, but we haven't seen it for a while. We'll see how he's adapted. You know, because a lot of the rumblings we've been hearing is that Froggen's actually not adapted that well. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's still playing the same champions he played last season. I mean, Zeref is like, he's not that bad of a champion if you have the right team comp set up for it. Uh, poke champions are still really strong for controlling objectives, controlling turrets, so it's not like he's like, completely out of the meta is like, oh, yeah. what am I even playing here? <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's definitely sticking with the same champions. Yeah, and he's also tailored his build for the earlier power uh, that we've seen a lot of people start doing, the cheaper items here that are going to give you that big boost. Morel and Omicron right into the Void Staff. So even at two items, uh, he provides a lot of poke damage. The thing I really wanted to look at, though, was Lemon Nation. He upgraded to Home Guards really quickly for his mobility boots. The Cloud9 are putting so much effort into getting those deep wards because all they need is that one team fight where they have balls teleport in um, behind Alliance, and if he can get a good engage, like, the entire team can crumble very quickly. Uh, for Alliance if Cloud9 are able to make their engage quickly. I think so. the engage is going to be a little hard for them. I mean, you see Corky, he has second item QSS, and I wouldn't be surprised Ooh. to see that coming out of the Xerath right after that. So Yeah, I, I just wondered, since they built that, I wonder if that's like go time for Alliance, where they realize, okay, I've completed this, let's try and make a fight, let's try and force something, dragon up in 30 seconds. Meteor's a little out of position here. He's going to flag and drag back into Dragon Pit. The Lantern was thrown from Lemonation, but it seems that Alliance are posturing for a fight. Well, they're doing. Uh, Cloud Nine's pulling them around the map here, as you can see. High split pushing down bottom, uh, and the three-man squad here kind of roaming all together to try and answer all lanes at once. Cloud Nine trying to keep up the pressure. Yeah, this is definitely the right play from Cloud Nine. They know that they can't let Alliance get that hold with the vision around Dragon. They don't want to give up that Dragon. They want to have that eight percent uh, AD and AP. So they have made sure to go into the enemy jungle, and they're not warding around Dragon. They're warding deep in the jungle. They're not even gonna let them get in in the first place. Yeah, the opportunity to, to get those picks for Cloud9 is very scary for Alliance. So we'll see if they actually do try and rush over to that Dragon. Looks like they're taking their time and they're going to be too late. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try and force the mid instead, but they are way too late. And actually, I think because of the delay, Alliance are actually going to get it and face Cloud9. Yeah, they're going to get in position there, Sneaky. He's going to have enough to clear out that wave, and they got literally nothing from that. So all that posturing, all that chances they tried in river just completely back throwing cloud nine full control right now of the map it's only a thousand gold difference but they are the ones that are very much dictating the pace of this game yeah i give cloud nine the late game in this once fizz gets an hourglass and he starts to get some cdr uh, he's just going to be a wrecking face and same thing with losandra like they might be able to build qss but that's not going to matter when you just you have, once you have enough damage to just pop through that QSS, it doesn't matter if they're CC, and you just kill them outright. Yeah, exactly. Lissandra has other viable targets to ult. There are plenty of targets on this team that she can ult besides Corky, so we'll see if they just decide to 100% somebody who's a little bit easier to keep down. We gotta kill the Soraka, man. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. the target. You know, the irony with Reckless joining Alliance, of course, Alliance were always the team that was very passive, took a while, made sure they got to their perfect moment before they started a fight. The irony that Reckless now goes there, who himself was leveled out at being very passive, it's like this team, I'm not surprised we're hitting the 22 minute mark without a single first blood because Alliance, they are happy to farm and this is something we're used to in the European scene. That's why it's going to be refreshing to see how they deal with the Unicorns, whether they get them in the final or whether they face them obviously in the EU LCS, which they will be see how the the meta changes for them I think yeah it, oh. it, it's building up so much tension for this game too because oh. here it comes it finally is is it that's the question because the teleport goes down there's the route on high cataclysm on frog and flashes out of it and everybody from our lines backs away everything the used. waters from high does not do anything and the full disengage reckless is still pushing top they know Zeref doesn't have flash now so they're going to be looking for a team fight really soon once uh, their ultimates come back up they're going to be just trying to get a pick yeah, I think Wicked used his flash as well in that as well. Reckless, though, putting a lot of damage down. High should be, uh, ball should be here just in time to uh, defend that, so he's not going to get any damage on that tower. It just alleviates some pressure for Alliance as they shove out both bot and mid. High, though, is he fancying a go at Wicked, who has 
Zero magic resist at the moment. Still yet to complete that Rod of Ages either. Still at the 23 minute mark. Yet to complete a single item. He's got the Merc Tread. Well, That's he does have the boots, but we don't really count that. That's probably not going to save him, but you know. What about the ring? Does that count as complete? <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I think it's really weird how Alliance is playing their team comp here. Alliance's team comp is a comp that wants to group up early and siege objectives and take out the turrets and control the map. But it's 23 minutes in the game, only turrets that are down are the outers, and you haven't really seen them go past the river at all in this game. It's it's definitely a change of pace from yesterday, that's for sure. This is it's taking a leisurely start to the day. Yeah. Definitely uh, warming up the crowd, I think it's safe to say. <laughs> That's what I said. Like, it's building up so much tension for that first team fight, and I thought it was going to happen in the jungle, but has not been relieved yet. I have to say, because it's going so slowly as well... Oh, it, wow. It, first it, items ages. The Legion. Yeah, exactly. Like, we do, we haven't even... Meteos hasn't had to be the one to build the Aegis. Because it's going so slowly, they can actually have Lemon Nation build it. And Meteos can focus on just tanky stats for himself and be the more selfish tank. He's going to be a pretty strong frontline here. I'm actually really surprised that Meteos went with the Boots of Mobility. He didn't really do too heavy yeah. ganks, and he wasn't really doing any power plays. And against this team, they have a lot of CC. They have Zara Stun. They have Elise Cocoon. They have Maokai CC. And they all do a lot of magic damage. So I figure you just go with Merc Treads there. Well, a lot of pink wards right now from, honestly, both teams. They're pretty well stacked. You can see Alliance still with them all in their inventory. Cloud9 have a fair few down on the map right now. They know Zara's flash is down, so that's what they're looking for right here. They see him cut off from his team. Meteos really wants to get the ultimate on him. There's the Cataclysm. They got him locked Ooh. up. Is this going to be fast blood? Yes, it will. It's balls against it. Can they close in? Can they get any more? Yes, they can. Sneaky goes in. That's going to be Nif going down off the side. Repel from Shook. He's got nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Death sentence thrown out. Not going to land from Lamination, but that's a three for zero, and they can still keep pushing this mid. Well, that escalated quickly, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. they, they knew Zerif's flash was down, so they knew that was their time to fight, and they saw him cut off from the team a little bit. And of course, it doesn't matter if he hits his EQ combo uh, on Jarvan, he's like, I'm just gonna ult you, and you're, you're stuck with me. You can't do anything, and you're dead. Yeah, easy target there for the culling. And you have to give, you know, Meteos was, had so much patience sitting on that pink ward for so long. Cloud9's diligence in their ward coverage finally pays off. They just, they spent so much time picking the correct fight to actually go for the engage. Well worked from Cloud9. The thing is, we could all see it coming, but then again, we do have the benefit of seeing the entire map. <laughs> so, uh, But they knew Meteos was stuck around there. As we said, with that flash down, they were very patient in their play, took themselves an objective from it. And now we'll see what they do next. High got himself killing assist in there. Nice stack of gold, but Alliance are putting pressure on this mid turret. There was a lot of pressure on the top, but right now this turret's going down fast here. We are going to get balls coming around. He should be able to clear this wave out. Have they got enough? They take it down. That's surely a mistake from Cloud9 to back away and let that happen. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to rotate top. They don't really want to fight for the dragon. They want to use what their team comp is good at, and that well, is they've CG. Up. They're locked on high. He's going to try and bounce away from this one. Wicked trying to lock him up. The rest of Cloud9 trying to rotate, but they're too slow. They're still in the mid lane. There's going to be a lot of damage going down on this. Froggen's locking out Meteos. Meteos going to slide in flag and drag. He's calling the Cataclysm once again. Fires <laughs> off the ultimate. Not enough to take down High. And the rest of Alliance are scattering like the wind. Balls is going to keep on chasing. The death sentence lands onto Shook. He gets locked down. Back around the side. Wicked's getting locked up. Sneaky will finish that one off. Meteos picks up the kill. And the rest of Alliance back away. Just as they thought they made a play. They go 3 for 0 once again. And now Cloud9, they could go Baron. Yeah, not sure what Frog was doing in the jungle there. It yeah. looked like he didn't get the memo. All the rest of his team's like, yo, man, we're going top. We're going to take this turret. Let's do it, team. Let's go. And Frog is like, yo, I'm just going to go venture around the forest for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Xerath is like that artillery mage, and you always want your artillery on the back line, especially if they don't have flash ready. Meteos has done such a good job, though, of finding him and singling him out for an easy kill for Sneaky. But that's going to be dragon number two here for so, Cloud9. I want to mention... There was a clear opportunity for Baron. Five members there, 26 minutes in swing, could have been a fairly easy Baron. Instead, they chose to go for Dragon. Is that now a sign of the way this game is really going to go? Because five stacks of Dragon is far more than a Baron now. Well, I don't think it's really about that. It's more that junglers are really poor right now, and they haven't built any armor, so he can't really tank it at this point. Yeah, the Baron fight's actually pretty strong right now. But again, here we have the replay. Elimination does come up with a big hook onto Shook, not able to dodge that one at full length and the squad down here Meteos and uh, Sneaky found another one 
Yeah, I was sitting there looking at that, trying to figure out why why is there like what was Froggen doing in the jungle there? Is he just like trying to just slow moving Zereth? I, I got nothing, man. I'm like, I have no no clue why he's he there. has only got tier one boots as opposed to pretty much everyone that has tier two and more on uh, Cloud Nine. So maybe he was just caught out in the uh, the rotato. Yeah, he wasn't trying to, quite in position. Trying to swing up top from mid, but they took different paths. His team just left him in the dust, man. This is really important when the Lions' team come. You just have to stay together as a close unit. If you don't have the Maokai to peel. They have flashes this time around, but that's Froggen. He's already used it. Stun goes down, gets the damage down. Hyde's locked up. Cataclysm pancakes for Medios as he slides in. Lemonation's going to get taken down. The Lions are picking up some kills this time around. They can get on towards balls, but not quite enough damage. Reckless is going to have to kite them around here. Medios putting the damage down. Can he get back on towards Sneaky? Wick is locking up on towards him. Throws out the saplings. Medios is being kited. Reckless gets himself one. Wicked goes in, gets the second, they can clean up for the ace! Oh. AD Carry versus AD Carry! And Reckless comes out victorious! And it's the ace for Alliance! And that's the, that is exactly the team fight that Alliance wants. They want that team fight where they're going to be funneling in, Zeref can get his damage off on a line, and then Maokai is just going to be the, that brute force front line and peeling for them. Yeah, and I think as far as that fight ending there, Medios kind of baited uh, Sneaky and Balls to re-engage with very, very low HP going after Corky there. Let's take another look. All right, so here it is. They do want to go after Froggen once again, and he does land the fish into Culling, but Froggen's able to escape this time because his flash is back up for this one, and they lock down high. Yeah, I think high should have looked the E out there rather than going in. He was exhausted. I'm not really sure why he E back into the fight there. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think he. Right after his Zanyas, he got to. He, uh, he immediately went down. But here it is. So Medio says at full life, so he feels like he wants to keep going. But Sneaky and Balls are so low, they can't get past this Malachi. And there's no way that full tank Jarvan is going to be able to solo that Corky. So why did, why did Froggen not flash out of that ulti? That's what I want to know because he had it available. Oh, the fish. The fish was there at the last second. He could have flashed out, and that would have kept him alive. I guess he was expecting the Meteos Pancake to come a lot quicker as Meteos is locked up. He will get saved out though. And now Froggen is just getting 100 to 0. Is it enough? Yes, he's taken down. There's the bleed coming out. High now getting locked up. He can't get an escape from this one. Teleport comes in. Airs balls to try and turn this fight around. But Cloud9 are very low on hit points right now. Nip gets focused. High goes down. Wicked locks onto him. Balls is going to get dropped as well. Donny's Outlast is enough to save him for now. Is it going to be enough? Here comes Reckless. Can clean up crew once again for our lives. Ooh. Sneaky though. Doing the damage, in comes High, tries to lock on towards him, Medios will get on, he goes, QSS saves the day, and Reckless picks himself oh, up a jungle, there's the quadra kill for Reckless, that is why Alliance paid the money to transfer this man into their team. Again, this backline here, Reckless, the entire fight, dumping out the damage, and that QSS definitely coming up big for them. Yeah, Reckless is free to do whatever he wants to do. Um, they dropped all their damage on killing that Zareph, and they still have to deal with this front line and get through to Reckles, and Reckles is happy to sit in the back. He has QSS, he can't be CC'd, and he just do free auto attacks all day. Well, I mean, Wicked doing his perfect job of just tanking for days there. All right, so let's take another look at this high going straight in onto Froggen. Uh, and he's able to use the Zanyas and survive long enough, but even though they killed Froggen and uh, High was still alive, High had to spend the whole time escaping here and didn't get to add much more damage to the fight. Reckless, you can see, he's in the middle. Has to Valk out over uh, the ultimate from Balls. But he's just putting out so much damage, and it's, they're having a hard time getting through Wicked. Sneaky finishes him off, but again, loses the heads up. I think he was actually able to mm. dodge the damage of Sneaky's Q right there as well. He flashed, I think he flashed it. Flashed he he, he yeah. would have gone down to the double, I think, but flashed away just in time. And Reckless now 7-0-3. Well, what a debut, that's for sure. And what a close match. We had Cloud9 starting to look to be in control. And I think for themselves as well, I think they felt they had a clear favorite in the team fight. But it's been Alliance that have come out on top in the last two with two clear aces, but still, Cloud9, they are the ones being aggressive. They are the ones looking for the kills as Wicked just gets tankier and tankier as this game goes on. Balls' damage is going to become a problem soon. Oh, Wicked actually went with the new item, uh, the movement speed one, the one that allows you to hard engage and then slow everybody around him. I think he's going to use it as a pulling, uh, as a peeling tool in this game. Wait, what, what? is that? What was that item called, Kobe? He's going to be terrible. What is <laughs> it called? Righteous... <laughs> Righteous glory? Yeah, the gl righteous glory. All right, the righteous glory of Wicked. He's just going to be running in and peeling with that thing. I can't, I can't wait to see it. This is wicked. the first time I've seen this item in competitive play. Well, they definitely do have the tank advantage here for Alliance with Wicked as the 100% dedicated tank. Any tank that you get coming out of the jungle is going to be sort of that discount tank. Not going to be 
quite able to soak up as much as Wicked. And Cloud9 still haven't been able to complete uh, their locket either. I think if Cloud9 gets that solid engage that they've been looking for, uh, I'm definitely going to give it to Cloud9 in this. And they have the vision around Dragon. This is a Dragon you don't want to give up because it's just more movement speed for more engage from Cloud9. And also, you mentioned Soraka um, pretty early on about being a very good target to take out first for Cloud9. Her being up this long in the team fights really, really extends um, extends them for Alliance and is exactly what they want. Dragon going down very quickly, though. Move speed is huge for this Cloud9 team. If you look at the bottom lane, there's this massive wave piling. Uh oh they've locked on Lemonation. He's going to go down. Will he get sniped out? He will, but that's a bit of a waste of the ulti. And now the rest of Cloud9 try to put the damage down. High getting locked up. He gets dropped. Bolt is in trouble. Sonny Zaglas is not going to be enough to save him from this one. He gets picked off for a double kill for Froggen. And the rest of Cloud9, they're pushing. Are they going to go straight so, for Baron? It seems they will. They are three dragons down, remember. They have to try and make something from this. All right, Cloud9 going down. Bottom to try and get something out of this. They're going to get at least one turret. Alliance going to split here to try and wave clear. They don't they need everybody for that Baron. This is dangerous because they could lose the inhib. Remember, there's, has both there's, summoners. Yeah, there's a flash up and a barrier. So even if he gets Cataclysm on in Medios, he could put pressure on towards him. Nif has joined him, but that turret is down, and that is a fair play. Froggen now caught out. Just try and get away. Sneaky taking very low. Remember, there's no ultimate from Froggen just yet. It's on a cooldown. It's a pretty quick one, but it is on cooldown. And that no oh, Medios. Are they going to try and collapse onto this one? No. It seems they're going to get away scot free. And then a Baron for an inhib turret. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah, this is really in Alliance's favor right now. If you get Baron on this kind of team comp, this pokey siege team comp, it is just going to be brutal for Cloud9 because their only option, once again, is to hard engage. And if they don't get that engage all perfect, it's just the game is done. Yeah, there's no way they can wave clear. The cannon minions buffed up by Baron have such long range that there's nobody who can get to them. May they have one culling, and that's it. They can buy time for one wave here. Other than that, it's going to be really hard for Cloud9 Ooh. to clear anything. There's yeah. the Infinity Edge just completed as well for Reckless, so he is going to be putting yet more pain down. Wicked also getting tankier. Frozen Heart completed for him. And, of course, Froggen keeps on stacking out that damage with another needlessly large rod in there. Is that going to be a Zonius? I think it may well be. We'll see where it goes. But at the moment, Cloud9... Other ones feeling the pressure, despite a great start they had, Alliance. You play the long game with Alliance, they are experts <laughs> at it, and we know that more than anyone. Look at Cloud9 are doing, though. They're split pushing once again, pushing both sides uh, until Alliance finally get up to the actual Ooh. turrets, and then waiting to recall to try and defend the inhibitors here. So let's see if they've created enough, enough pressure. Meteor's trying to draw them away. That top tower is going to go down. I don't think anyone's going to... Oh, no, he's going to back away. Balls is backing away because they're feeling the pressure on this middle turret. This we did really... see a little flank from Meteor. He wanted to get around the back of him, but he was quickly cut off by Well, that's actually Wicked. not what he's trying to do. He's trying to keep the minions away from the people at the Baron buff, so they're not going to get pumped right. up. And he's yeah. pulling them away so Cutting they can't have siege. Well, it not doesn't. working, though. No, I mean, you only need one wave when you've got that Baron buff if you don't have the wave clear, and that's all they've taken. That's going to be the inhib going down. They're going to trade the top tower for it. You can see Balls has already taken that down as he pushes a wave in towards the inhib turret, but it's Alliance taking the first inhibitor down of this game, and now we're all tied. 13-13 in kills, 36 minutes into this game, and this is very much the semi-final we were hoping for. Yeah, Reckless is definitely showing up big. There's been a lot of... A lot of people have switched teams in the offseason, but this one definitely looks like it's fitting. 7-0 and 6 so far, working very well with the team already. Yeah, he's uh, having kind of a strong performance. Right? <laughs> I mean, Sneaky, Sneaky is uh, definitely showing out, too. He has 7-2-4 when his team is slightly behind. Um, well, they're not even behind in goal, but they're behind in, on the ejectors as far as like turrets yeah. and inhibitors. Uh, I don't know. The Lions still have half on their Baron, but I don't think they're going to be able to use it in a Siege. So I think the next team fight's going to be posturing around the Dragon. Let's not forget, Sneaky went 16, 2, and 10 as well in yesterday's game. So he's had some pretty huge performances for Cloud9, very much in his element. And 7, 2, 4 is certainly not a bad score for him right now. Of course, Lucian was a champion. He had banned against him in the quarterfinals in the World Championships because he had such a good performance on it. It drew the bans from the Koreans. But as it stands, it's Alliance. Have they got anything in the tank. The Baron buff has got a minute left on it. And the timer. I'm not too sure they're going to gain too much from this, pushing back up the mid. It's surely the top lane they want to start looking at, taking down that inner turret. But it looks like they're going to try and control the waves. There goes Wicked, cutting off towards the top. And yes, the rest of the team are going to follow. But High, he's left alone here. And this is an exposed inhibitor. 
Yeah, it looks like Alliance will take this top turret. I'm actually not 100% sure if the Maokai can even handle the Fizz at this point. Uh, High has a, a Void Staff, Lich Pane, Hourglass. He does a ton of damage, so it'd probably be a pretty close fight. Yeah, he has the main three items there for Fizz. That's huge for him. He has to worry, though, about any sort of reinforcements before going for a one versus one. Wow. Everyone from Alliance pulled back for that. Every member of the team. So, well played, High. That's done enough to delay the Baron buff. That's going to wear out. It's got... Just 20 seconds left on it, and that will drop off. So, Dragon in a minute. Can Alliance fight for this one? This is something they need. They need that 8% bonus because they haven't been able to get it once yet, have they? Yeah, Alliance have one they've dragon. Got one yeah, Alliance they do. actually do have one dragon, but really what you they're worried what? about is you know what we need? You know what we need? We need a counter in this game. Yeah. I think the new spec mode is great. We've got so many new smite things in the jungle that have all got these new little buffs, but the biggest important change to the whole game oh. was this dragon change. Shook getting hooked up, not going to be enough. That's not the target you want to get. You can just repel out on that. And also, of course, you have Soraka to also heal the burst there. Soraka healing Maokai is a really big problem for Cloud9 right now. There's no way they can take down this front line. They have to get a good flank in. And this is what I was talking about with the Elise pick earlier, how they valued getting the side stone early, is he's just going to be warding up all their sides and behind him. You see how high is trying to get around behind them? But it's all warded up. They know when he's coming, and they're just going to move around as a unit and make sure that doesn't happen. Oh, Wicked saplings. Fighting three members of Cloud9. Has he got enough to tank them up? He's going to lock up balls. Zonia's outglass going down early. There's another Zonius from Frog and Froggen in trouble. He's gonna get locked Ooh. up and dropped by a pancake. But they are grouped up heavily. Have they got the damage to try and counter it? No. Sneaky picks up two. Can he chase on Chuck very low? There's a triple kill. Chases on towards Reckless. Reckless has to get the hell out of Dodge right now because he's looking to try and chase and get that Quadra. Sneaky has not got another flash available. He can't get on. And Alliance, they're in trouble. They've got a back. So they're oh. shoving and chasing here, going for it. Here Balls is going Balls. around the side. He's going to flank around any moment now. Has he got enough to chase on there? Can he lock up onto Reckless? He will get in there. There's Reckless. He's in trouble. Tries to clear it. Hooked in. And he goes down. Lemonation with another beautiful death by a grasp. Nip is in trouble. He's going to try and back away. Cloud9 can close the game right here. Uh, it's going to be really close. They don't really have a minion wave. Ten uh, seconds here. Death. I don't think they're going to go for that. Yeah. Probably just get the dragon and be like, yes, we won the team fight. We got what we wanted. Exactly. And they also had a huge wave up top that took out a turret in that time, I believe. So they did lose a turret for this. Inhibitor down, though, and fourth dragon down. Oh, uh, it's going to be a pause. Uh, we have our first pause. So... I want to talk about how that team fight got set up, actually. Um, I think that was a really big misplay by Wicked, and he's not fighting the team, fighting with the team as he should be. Like, he's trying to engage in when actually what he needs to do is just stay with his team. Because if you saw how C9 engaged on that fight, they had two on the top, and then they had the rest, you know, the three on the left side. So they're trying to hit you from multiple angles, which is what Alliance's team comp can't handle. Yeah, exactly. You're saying, like, they're going to have vision to see the flank coming, but it doesn't matter if you actually take the flank and you have you take those fights, right? Wicked, he got about half of his life taken off before the rest of his team was able to do any damage themselves. And there was also a really nice fish by High. He managed to snipe it through right by uh, Wicked, and it, hit, he hit, it, it didn't actually hit uh, the Xerath because he hourglassed it, but it locked him down long enough to where he, they could have follow-up damage, and I think they hit the threshold hook on him and just... Wrecked him right after that. Yeah, he got 100 percent in there. So it was a really good sort of pincer movement there from Cloud9. And we've seen this so many times with the teams that have these sort of siege squads set up, and they get caught in these jungle fights where there are multiple avenues to be attacked from, and they sort of fall apart. Yeah, and this is such a... I feel bad for Alliance right now because they just... They were in the driver's seat, mm. and they just lose this team fight. They, just, they, they had all the control, and they just lost this team fight. They lost their bottom inhibitor. And then it goes right into a pause. And you can see it on their faces. They're all just sitting there. Yeah. And they're like trying to contemplate yeah. what happened. And you can't, also can't talk about the game during the pause either. So all you're literally, <laughs> you're sitting there and all you have are your own thoughts. You're just like, oh my God. Like what Built up do? rage. I think <laughs> no, let that it sink in. Not, not rage. It's more just like uncertainty. Because you don't know if you lost the last team fight because of what the team did or, or what the enemy team did. And you're trying to like pick that apart in your brain and you're trying to think about your next move. But you can't even tell that to your teammates. It's a, it's a team game. You're like, well, uh, I hope uh, you're on the same page as me over here. You're like looking at the other guy. You're like, maybe if I can just send so, him some telepathy or so something. So when that here. happens, like the minute you unpause, is it just like a big, massive blurb of communication? Yeah, it's like, yeah, everyone's yeah. like, ah, it wasn't my fault. I was like, all right, man, I got like flash up and like, and then this like, everybody starts <laughs> like, we're going to go bottom. And it's like pretty much all the thoughts that people had sitting there waiting for the game to start, they Built all just up. explode them out like in like 10 <laughs> seconds. And you're just like, uh, okay, like, I guess we're going to do that. <laughs> 
So we'll see how it works out. So inhibitor down for Alliance, inhibitor down for Cloud9, but it will be respawning very soon. So very much Cloud9 back in the driving seat in this game. Very tense. But that was just a great flanking maneuver, really, from Cloud9. That's what that was all about. Yeah, and it's actually, it shows the strengths and weaknesses of both these teams really well. That's why I've really been enjoying this game, because both of them have shown the strong points of their teams at different points in the game. I think the biggest thing, though, Fourth Dragon forces so much pressure. It just it gives Cloud9 the ability to force whatever they want, because everybody knows that Fifth Dragon is just way too much power. If, if you let that go, then it's... It's pretty much game. Well, not just the Dragon. Uh, yeah, Cloud9, they have their mid inhibitor down. It's going to be respawning pretty soon. But the big thing is, is bottom inhibitor's down, and guess what's coming up in like a minute and a half? Yeah. The Baron. So you have to leave somebody bottom, and you basically, you can force Alliance into this uh, mode where they have to make a play, and they have to TP in. And if you can bait that TP out, you basically win a free Baron if you just if you just don't die there. Yeah, and that's a really good point because TPing in with this Alliance team, you need everybody there at the right time. If you don't have Wicked, like the tank with you when the team fight, you, those few seconds that the teleport takes the channel, it could be over by then. Somebody's going to die in yeah, that time. that's true. The Lease isn't going to be up front lining against that Fizz that can just yeah. one. Like, they have so much damage out of Cloud9 and so much catch. Uh, the fight is going to be over before the TV ever happens. And on top of that, Maokai has a really difficult time clearing out super minions, especially since he has no AP. He didn't build that Roa. I want to see how long it takes him to kill one of those super minions. <laughs> it's probably going to take him like 45 seconds or something. Well, here we go. Back in the game. Dragon up. And this could be the fourth stack for Cloud9. And as you mentioned, once you reach that fifth stack, it is very hard to come back with that double buff. Stacking up 16% damage bonus is enormous on anyone. If you get the Baron on top of that, Snowball Ooh. is happening. That top tower is taken low. There was a big wave of Super Minions also in the middle. You can see half the hit points shredded off that Nexus turret. So it is far from over this game. Cloud9 still very much chasing it, but the blue buff has been stolen away from high. They do get a uh, consolation prize there, which is big for Frog and to have that blue buff, of course, with your siege, but as Saint said, there's a big thing pulling them down bottom. The line of super minions will create that extra, extra man there for Cloud9 and have constant pressure on the bottom side. Oh, it's a trap. They're going to try and set up a trap here, Alliance, <laughs> you can see. But I don't think Cloud9 are going to be dumb enough to trigger this and walk into it. You can see Meteos and Lemonation being the ones to check. Lemonation, of course, can throw out that lantern and check those bushes from a long way off, which is what he's doing. As soon as he takes a sapling, he's well aware of what's Ooh, happening. Eyes blinked them already. He's circled around behind. Well, we'll see whether he tries to go in there. Erectus is actually the one that's going actively looking for him, and they do back away from this one. They've got to keep that wave pushing, but look at the bottom lane. Those super minions are stacking up. Somebody's going to have to deal with them soon. Yeah. Are they going to send the Maokai back for this? Uh, it's, he's going to have a really difficult time clearing this, and all they have to do, Cloud9 doesn't have to do anything. They just have to keep that mid wave under, under control and then just control around Baron, and their play is to do nothing right now. They don't have to start Baron. They don't have to do anything right now. They're, you see, they're just going to walk back and forth until they see Maokai bottom. Oh, there it is. Baron started off. Maokai a million miles away. Has got teleport in there, but there's no resilience from Alliance. They're going to let Cloud9 take it. And now with four Dragon buffs and the Baron, this is going to be a very hard defensive job for Alliance. Yeah, I think even it's going to be ridiculously hard for them to defend a Baron up Cloud9 team. That's probably the right call not to rush into Baron Pit. They had no vision. You can't really rush in there as this Alliance squad. Yeah, once Cloud9 saw that uh, Alliance was giving up on that ward, and they also yeah. saw Maokai show up bottom, like, well, I mean, I guess we'll just take the free worm. And uh, they're just going to push down mid lane right now. They have all the super minions, and they're, uh, they're going to let the minions do all the work. And if you remember, the Baron buff also makes uh, the minions take, you know, reduce magic damage, reduce AoE. Yeah. So it's going to be really hard for Zerif to clear that out. And it's going to be up to him, too, because the range on those cannon minions is probably the most annoying thing about this, because they sit outside of turret range and just slowly whittle it down. Yeah, who's who's going to kill this cannon minion on their team? There is no pressure on Cloud9 right now. They can just relax at the gates here. If they, if they don't even end up getting this turret, it's not that big a deal, because as we said, the dragon's going to come back up eventually, and they have complete control of the map right now. And just keeping Fizz bottom, uh, they know Fizz is like a terrible champion in a push. You're not going to walk up and see the turret at all, so he's just going to be down there putting Ooh. pressure on that lane. So the hope for Alliance right now is that Cloud9 get over-anxious and dive the turret. 
I'm not sure if that's going to happen. You can see, look at the range on that cannon in just popping shots off from very long way away. Froggen's having to snipe them down at the moment, but that turret's already down to half hit points, and there's a gigantic stack building in the top half of the lane. So that's going to have to be dealt with very soon as well, along with those super minions in the bottom. That's where Cloud9 are rotating to. They're going to head off towards there. Oh, Lemonation caught out, and Reckless pops him off with a rocket. That was not in the playbook for Lemonation, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure why he's over there. I mean, they had, Cloud9 had, had exactly the position they wanted. They had that way pushing in. They had nobody could deal with it because they have people, they had set, they have to deal with high as well. Like, they could stretch Alliance out then. All they had to do was just sit back, let the minions do all the work. And that is exactly what Alliance fans want to see. A yeah. pick like that, that was the cr most crucial time for them. That brought them barely some breathing room. Both of these inhibitor turrets were about to go down, and Cloud9 still keeping up the pressure here. That wasn't even the ultimate from Frogany either. It had to be in the stun, and the Arcane Pulse just catching him out there. Super Minion still in the bottom. See, they're continuing to keep the split push book going, but there's just not the same pressure there was a moment ago, and lack of that, Cloud9, they're backing away. They know that maybe that chance at sieging has been lost. They took that middle turret very low, but just not enough. I think they should go back to sieging. If you look at Froggen's mana when he's clearing the wave out, yeah. he, he has Morel. He doesn't have Chalice or in, you know a Chalice item at all. So he's not going to be able to regenerate that mana. He's using all of his mana to wave clear. So if you just keep the pressure on, keep high bottom, like, Elimination's back up. You lost 30 seconds off your Siege, off your Baron. You can still use the Baron and still use that pressure to get that mid turret. I've not seen a mid laner with a QSS for a very long time. It's so cheap right now. That was one of the yeah. first things about the preseason that uh, caught my eye. Reducing the co uh, the cost there to actually get that item because Nigtron Cloak's not even in the game anymore. I'm actually surprised they didn't get it sooner. I mean, it's only 1,200 gold. They have like a really heavy magic damage team. They have the Lissandra and the Fizz. It's going to be coming up to pop you. I'm just, oh yeah, I'm not honestly surprised I didn't see it earlier. Well, now that he does have it, the two main damage sources here for Alliance are going to be able to get themselves out of Lissandra Ultimate. 50 seconds. Let's see, though, yeah. Uh, ward coverage has sort of been established by Cloud9. There are some openings here for Alliance, and they definitely do not want to give that one up, so. Is this going to be the first fifth dragon we've seen competitive? I don't think I've seen a, a five dragon in any of the OGN matches. Yes. It's been, the, I believe, the longest game of the tournament so far. Wick is going to face check. He's going to catch it. He's the man that wants to be taking the damage, but I'm not sure he planned on taking over half his hit points in damage from Cloud9. And now, as you mentioned, the fifth dragon. Alliance absolutely have to fight for this. Again, the call-in massaging down on Wicked. He has got teleport, so he can go back to base. But remember that fountain charge? That's not even as quick as Wicked it used has to be. Teleport though, so he can just go back, heal, and teleport in for a re-engage. Or can he, if I tries to bounce on top of him, didn't manage to get back this time around, will be drawn away in Cloud9. They know this is the big one. Five dragon stacks is huge. It's going to go down very fast. And Alliance are a little slow to oh, react to this one. It. They've got it. And now Shook tries to flash in. He's too late to the party. They've got the double damage. A wicked goes in, but he's just left all in his own. Reckless getting picked off the side. Balls gets in, takes him down. Alliance are in trouble. Nip flashes away, but Sneak is chasing on him. He's going to finish him off. It's the ace for Cloud9. And surely game one of the series. What yeah. a valiant effort there by Alliance. They, they knew they had to fight it, but Cloud9, once they could burn that dragon down, there's no chance. Well, just like at the World Championships, Cloud9 took down Alliance in their first matchup in the group stages. And it seems that history will indeed repeat itself here. But this is a best of three series. We have more games to go. But what a start from Cloud9. It was a 47-minute epic, but they are 1-0 up in the Intel Extreme Masters San Jose. What a relaxing start to the day for us. <laughs> Such a long, long early game there. First Blood not coming until well past 20 minutes. And we do finally see that there is this new preseason sort of mechanic in the game that five dragons sort of forces an end to it. We probably won't be seeing any more, you know, 60 plus 80 minute games. Uh, this season in League of Legends. Yeah, I already know Twitch chat just spamming the resident sleeper like over and over <laughs> again the whole game. But I feel like Alliance actually made a lot of blunders in that game because their team comp is all about grouping up early and then just taking the objectives and forcing the enemy to engage on you. And you saw they didn't even really group up for those uh, in more inner turrets until, what is it, like 25 minutes into the game? I it think if they just really put the pedal to the metal, grouped up, used what their team comp's good at, and just started taking all the outers and taking all the vision, uh, it would have been a lot different game.
Well, what a fantastic start to the series. It took a while to get going, but boy, did it heat up. We saw a lot of aces in there. We're going to go over towards our expert desk to take us through.